Uh, Merrick Howell, 2024, draft eligible. Uh, I play for the Moose Shaw Warriors, and I'm on the I Only Touch Greatness podcast. I'm Lyndon Lakovic. I'm 2025, draft eligible. I play for the Moose Jaw Warriors, and I'm on the I Only Touch Greatness podcast. Looking for the most beers on tap? Great steaks, great staff. Head over to the John B. Pub. We got the best beers, steaks, chicken wings, nachos in town. Come see us at the John B. Pub. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Come sign up for our football pool. Say hey, St. Yin. The number one sports podcast in Vancouver with Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. Ryan Hayes and Big Mike are taking over the podcast scene in Vancouver. Get down or lay down. Lay down. his first in the Western Hockey League. So first, Lennon, born in Kelowna. What was childhood like for you growing up, and uh, when did you start playing hockey? Uh, yeah, I probably started playing hockey around six. Um, you know, my uh, uncles both played, and um, he made it up to the NHL level, so I kind of just followed after him. And uh, yeah, it was great in Kelowna. Um Growing up, a lot of my buddies uh, played hockey, too, from school. So just playing minor hockey with them. And then a couple of them now are playing in the Western League as well. So it's good to see all my buddies grow up and uh, be successful. And Merrick, uh, Calgary born, if my stats are correct. Uh, what was yeah. childhood like for you? Uh, kind of same thing as Lyndon. Like, especially my dad being a he coached in the Western League and now coaches at uh, the University of Calgary. Okay. So, like, I kind of – I was kind of, like, born into a hockey family. 
And then now my uh, uncle, he coaches for the Colorado Avalanche as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I've kind of been, I've been wrapped around hockey my whole life, so that's how I kind of got into it. Side note about the Colorado Avalanche, my favorite player is Bowen Byram. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's, he's, just, he's, gonna be, he's already something real good, so he's going to be even better. Yeah, and just the way he always treated us growing up here in Vancouver. Yeah. Um, okay, back to uh, draft day. Let's get both you guys to draft day there at 2021. Linden was 2021, second round, pick 27. Where was you when it happened? Uh, yeah, um, I was actually at my buddy's house, who uh, actually ended up going uh, right after me, like the exact pick right after me. So it was a pretty cool moment. Um, you know, you're nervous, see where you go. You never know what's going to happen. And then uh, as soon as you see your name get called, it's just the best feeling ever. And then being at my buddy's house, see him going to pick right after me to Spokane was awesome. Yeah, who is that? Uh, Will McIsaac. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we met him before. The uh, Okay, Merrick, 2021 first round, 16th overall. Where were you when draft happened? Uh, I was at my house with my uh, dad and brother. Okay. And uh, we, had the, we had the live stream going. Didn't, didn't exactly know where I was going, but had a hunch it could be on there. So we were watching, ready for it. And same exact thing as what Lyndon said when your name is called. It's... It's one of those moments where you'll never forget. Just that kind of like, it's like a massive weight's lifted off your shoulders. Just that there's not as much pressure anymore. Like with all the scouts, all like the like kind of that stuff regarding that type of stuff. So just kind of hearing that was really really important for me. Okay, Jen, have you always been a forward? Uh yes, I have. Um, always uh, <clears throat> been all over the place, center, wing, whatever, but. You know, I always wanted to be a goalie, to be honest with you, but never dream never came true. But I think I'll stick with Ford for quite a bit. <laughs> it sounds like it's working for you. Yeah. Merrick, uh, defense all your life, correct? Yeah, my size has kind of led me to go that way, and I've kind of just stuck with it. Yeah. Is there something you like about it? Uh, I don't know. I think just kind of being – almost getting a quarterback to play, just kind of see everything. I think, I don't know, there's just something about it. I just just kind of stuck with it. Okay. And uh, take us back to your first WHL goals. Uh, and do you still have the puck? You might as well stay in the same order. Uh, yeah. Um, it was against Regina at the season opener. And, uh, yeah, I kind of just came down the wing and pulled it to the middle and – Shot it short side, used the D man as a screen. Um, yeah, it was a great moment. Um, definitely good to get the monkey off the back and get the first one. Felt real good. And then uh, I ended up giving my uh, first roll pack to my mom. So she's got that back at home. That sounds like the right person to give it to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I seen actually the highlight of that. We're going to drop that in here in the beginning of the thing. It was a nice toe drag coming across the coming across the blue line in towards the middle. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. Something I'll never forget. Yeah. And Merrick, what about your first goal? Uh, my first goal was against Med Hat in my uh, affiliate year. And my, I think it was my third game with the team. It was, it was actually a crazy story. I got We were in Swift Current the night before. <laughs> and I got a call at like, I think it was 11 in the morning or something. Where our GM Jason Ripplinger, he was like, he's like, is there any way you can get out for the game tonight? So my grandma actually drove in from Red Deer to come get me. Drove all the way to Swift Current, got there at like six thirty. Puck drop was at seven. Got dressed right away, went out, played the game, and then stayed in a hotel in Swift Current. Not sure if I was gonna, I was gonna be playing against Med Hat. They just kind of said, just wait it out, see what happens. And then ended up getting a call early in the morning saying, yeah, we're going to need you there. So went, hung out with the boys for a bit, got suited up, and then I uh, scored. And then the play kind of, Thomas Tian was going around the net, threw kind of threw a blind pass to the middle, had a feeling he was going to get through, jumped on it, and then kind of used the defender as a screenshot at kind of high blocker. 
Okay. So take us back to your guys' first games. Um, how do you guys calm the butterflies before that? And what was going through your head? Uh, yeah. Uh, my first game was against uh, Regina last year. is the last game of the season. And, uh, yeah, you definitely you try not to be nervous. But uh, I feel like once you get out there, I wasn't that nervous until uh, I got out there for my rookie lap. And I was, I was uh, yeah, I was shitting bricks, to be honest with you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I was really nervous. And then after the first period, you're like, okay, well, you're in a game now. So you kind of settle in after that. But yeah, definitely the butterflies do get to you, even though you try and pretend they're not there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, uh, my first game again against Regina as well. Yeah, uh, it's not a lot of ways to really calm those nerves. It's it's a big moment, and there's no denying that. I think the main thing is almost just accepting. Like you've played a ton of hockey games in your life; it's just another one. Yeah, it's faster. It's a lot different, but at the end of the day, you're out like you're playing for a reason. So I think. Like that just helped me kind of just understanding what was going on, what's happening, all that was really big. What do you guys find is the biggest uh, issue going from or no no stepping up into the dub? Um, I would probably have to say the pace of play, speed. Um, everything is so much faster, and you hear it all the time coming in midget. They always say uh, next level is so much faster, and it's true. And you could definitely tell once you get to the league that you just don't have much time and space. And if you do, all the best players, if they could buy time and space, definitely shows uh, it could change the game. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to agree with Lyndon on that. Like, especially just the decision making is probably the biggest thing. Like, as much as like everything's faster, that's like the plays you're making have to be fast. You got to read plays quicker. <laughs> You got to be, if you're pinching on someone, you got to pinch qu quicker. You got to close faster. I think it's like that just difference in speed is just massive. That's for sure. I bet it is. I mean, I only play beer league, so that's. <laughs> <laughs> my, dad, am... my dad plays beer league too. He tells me how it's just as good. So <laughs> there's some guys actually in beer league that probably could be, could have played in the dub back in the other. The one guy on our team played in the O back in the day. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can do the lacrosse goal. That's one thing. I, I, <laughs> I, I haven't done it. I, can. I haven't <laughs> done it yet. Can you guys do it? Uh, in practice, no yeah. game. Yeah, no, not not trying that in a game anytime no. soon. Not unless you want to ride the pine. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hey, so how did the uh, U17 summer camp prep you guys for this season? Uh, for me, definitely a ton. Uh, I feel like going in the camp you don't really know what to expect like you play against i guess all the guys from your league or region i guess and uh, you don't really know what to expect guys coming from ontario and quebec you just kind of hear about them and oh this guy's great and heard this guy's pretty good too but once you get there it's uh good to finally uh compare yourself against all these guys and i feel like i definitely uh compared pretty well i feel like i uh Showcased my uh, speed and skill quite well there and uh, turned a lot of heads, so I felt good. Yeah, I think same as Lyndon there, just kind of, you hear all this kind of chat about all these guys from the queue, especially like a bunch of the OHL guys as well. You kind of kind of hear all these like rumors and you're kind of thinking like, I mean, like what happens if they're actually like this unbelievably good and stuff like that. Yeah. And then once you kind of get there, you kind of get a feel for, the speed, especially just for going from kind of like your summer skates, as much as they're like fast paced or trying to get it ready for it. Like it does first practice does kind of hit you by a surprise just yeah. especially being in the summer. You're not as much as you're going hard in the summer. Like it's just a completely different atmosphere. Like, cause everyone's fighting for a spot. Yeah. There's th then for this year, I think that's kind of been the main thing that really helped me was just kind of getting to showcase my skill against a lot of those top guys from different leagues. I think that really helped my confidence heading into this season. Okay, good. Yeah, I feel like those get you guys warmed up, just ready to go, and then especially knowing that you're heading there now. Uh, what's it feel like representing Canada and putting that logo on? I imagine it would be awesome. Uh, yeah, it's pretty sweet. I mean, been watching uh, Team Canada play for – uh, I can't even remember how long. And uh, 
you always dream about wearing the logo and the Maple Leaf and to actually wear it and represent Canada at a tournament is just unbelievable. And uh, to think if you told me 10 years ago that I'd be playing for Team Canada, I would have told you you're crazy. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a cool experience. Yeah, you dreamed it. Now you got it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it definitely is a dream come true. Just one of those moments when you kind of read, when you get that call from one of the coaches kind of telling him you made like one of those teams to represent your own country is probably one of the coolest things you'll probably ever experience, I think, in hockey. I think kind of going from, because there's the WHL Cup where you represent your province. I think that's like a really big step where you kind of get to realize like this is pretty awesome. But I think now just kind of that feeling that I finally like, I have a chance to represent my country is it's a surreal, it's a surreal feeling. And how did you both find out it? you got it? Uh, yeah. Um, I kind of just got a call from uh, one of the directors at hockey Canada, um, when I was at school and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was at, in a bio class and I got the call. I actually missed the first call cause I didn't know, like who it was and my teacher wouldn't let me get go to the bath. I told him I'd go to the bathroom. He didn't <laughs> let me go to the bathroom. So I actually missed the call and I had to call him back. And uh, yeah, he told me I'd be representing Canada for uh, Team Black. And uh, yeah, just told me all the details. And I, yeah, I was in shock, really. I didn't know what was going on. And yeah, it was just unreal. I bet your teacher forgave you then. Yeah, I feel like he did. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same for me. I was actually in this next class after with Landon. <laughs> and then he kind of told me he got the call and then kind of told me to kind of be ready for it. And then I got the call saying not really same thing with the bathroom. I just told the teacher, <laughs> I just got to go to the hall and get a phone call. She said, all right. And then. Same thing. It was just an unbelievable feeling when they finally told you that you're going to be able to represent. I bet just like that, weight off your shoulders, right? Yeah. So what's it going to be like playing against your own friends and stuff on both being on a Canada team? I know that uh, Lyndon, your team, Black, and your coach is actually your coach now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, uh, Merrick, you're all, your team, White, with – my yeah. two guests, my two guests on Monday, Doyle and Marquez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. couple of beauties as well. Those two. Yeah, yeah no, they're no. definitely beauties. Yeah, there's yeah. something. <laughs> right, do you guys play against them? Uh, I played with uh, Marquez for I don't know, like six, seven years, probably. Played against him, and yeah, he, he's a character. You'll have fun with him. <laughs> okay, good, good. Hopefully, yeah, we we, were, we tried to fit him in tonight, but uh, he actually just messaged a couple, minutes, a couple minutes before just saying that uh, we need to, to reschedule for Monday. So it's all good. Um, how has Moose Jaw made you guys comfortable since being drafted? Uh, I don't know. It's kind of like, especially once we kind of get here, they, they kind of do everything in their power to make you feel like they're you're part of the team. I think the 20 year olds last year had a really big impact on our like careers. Now I think the way they're kind of accepting of us kind of, they like, they really tried to include us. They made us feel part of the team. I think that was probably the biggest thing going forward for us, especially just coming into this season, knowing like we were almost just one of the guys last year. So then this year was just huge for me. I found. Okay. Yeah. Um, feel like I could say the same thing. Um, this year, especially, I feel like we have a really good leadership leadership group. Um, all the guys on the team really get along, and they really do include the rookies. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're 15 or 20; they include everybody. So, I feel like we got a good group of guys, and they really made me uh, feel like um, special. That's for sure. And some of your players obviously went off to NHL camps. What did they bring back and share their knowledge with you? Ah, uh, yeah, a lot of them. Like, kind of just asking them about, about camp, stuff like that. They, it was really crazy to hear some of the responses just about how, like, how good some of the players actually are. Like, one of our, uh, like, because we have two guys that went to the Columbus camp. Yeah. And then I was talking to Martin Rysav. He said he was on the same, like, he's on a two-on-two -two shift against Goudreau and Line at the same time. 
<laughs> he said seeing those two work together is like it's unbelievable. He said it's just like you really think like the next level's good. He said it's not as good as you think. Like it's unbelievable. Like it's that great. It's that crazy. Holy. Okay, now for some fun questions. Yeah. <laughs> trying, to, trying to relax a little. Pressure's off. Okay, yeah. if, I don't know if your team does it, but some teams do it. If you were having a, if you had to sing one karaoke rookie karaoke song, what song? Oh are you yeah, Rookie Idol. Yeah. Uh, I got. I got to think about that. And oh, last year I I was on the uh, I was on a road trip to Lethbridge with the guys last year. Yeah. Oh. And I had to do one, and I did. Uh, what was it? I think it was. It was some rap song from the party, like the like the party a weekend before or something. Okay. And like we're all okay. kind of jamming out to it and stuff like that. So I did that one last year, but then this year, oh God, probably going to have to go with some Katy Perry song or something. Just, just one of those songs that everyone kind of knows, like maybe like a party in the USA or something. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to go with uh, Just the Way You Are by Bruno Mars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so you guys haven't done it yet this year then? No, uh, no, we had okay. our road trip give, coming up in a month, uh, so we'll probably yeah, do it there. I'll give you a hint. Over after, after asking everybody this question so many times, the easiest song to pick, tequila. It only has da -da 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 -da, oh, tequila. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, I might have to pull that one out. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Remember, yeah. Rem remember where you heard it. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So uh, what's your personal highlight? We'll go in that same order, I guess. I think I think it's got to be probably my first WHL goal. I think nothing really tops that. I think that's just one of those moments, especially because my first goal wasn't like it wasn't a bad goal. So that kind of was one of those goals where it's good shot, good place, good release. So I think nothing's really going to top that. I don't think for right now. Okay. Um, I could say the same, but I'm not. Um, I'll probably say, uh, you know, I'll say the brick tournament 2016, uh, okay. just being a, like, you don't, you're young, you don't really know, like, it's all just something new playing in a mall and playing against all these kids from North America. And it's pretty sweet. Yeah. It always sounds like an awesome tournament. Yeah. Um, what's one thing you've had to overcome to get to where you are today? Perhaps like an injury or a cut one time. Ah, uh, oh god, I can't think of it now. That wasn't supposed to be in my fun section of questions, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Fair enough. I can go. You. Yeah, you go ahead. Um, I actually got cut from my U eighteen team going into Medja my first year. I got so I played with all my buddies for like six, seven years. And then found out I got cut from a U18 team. And that was definitely some adversity I had to go through. And uh, to get to where I am now, I kind of just worked my, worked my ass off. And I'm here now, so definitely yeah. paid off. Okay. Uh, kind of growing up with a hockey dad and stuff like that, you kind of hear all those rumors like, Oh, you're only going to go this place because of that. And then at the end of the day, like, you're really not going to make, like, any, like, big leagues and stuff like that. I think just kind of just kind of learning to, like, not listen to anyone, just kind of drown out the noise was really big for me. Just kind of focus on my end goal is, like, at the end of the day, I have a coach, as a, like, my dad is a coach, so I have that in my back pocket. Like, whenever I need him, I can always ask him questions, stuff like that. I've learned to, like, use that as more of more of an advantage to myself and not let others get to me about it. Okay. Uh, what's some of your goals over the next five years or what are you trying to plan here? We all know the draft's coming for you guys, but until then. Um, for myself, obviously, well, like you said, obviously get drafted. And then uh, I'd probably have to say um, for Moose Jaw, I want to I wanna make it far this year. Uh, I feel like we got the team to 
mega far. So hopefully we can get a chance at winning the league. And then for personal, I would say probably make that U18 team next year. And then if that goes to plan, keep on progressing, make World Junior one day. So Yeah, that's the plan, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think Lindy kind of summed it up perfectly there. I think I gotta go with probably exact same goals there, like U eighteen, like Gretzky Holinka Cup there. Especially try to get invited to that camp and then even make the team from there. And then so far, so far, like kind of world same with the thing with the world juniors camps, all stuff like that. That's for sure. And that's usually what we found through the years of watching. And I'm a big fan. The world juniors is my favorite part. Uh, most of you guys get a good chance if you're on that, these teams that you're on now. And yeah. You're on yeah. The, you, Diane, you're on the U18s and the, then you get the Holinka Cup. And you, yeah. Yeah, and no, like this is just kind of like that first step and kind of going towards that end goal. Okay. Uh, 2024 is the draft. Do you get any like thoughts about it yet, or like do you, have you had any weird questions that anyone's ever asked? Like any anybody ever, any scouts ever asked you? I mean, having a dad, you might hear some good questions. Ah, uh, no, nothing that I nothing right now. Just kind of those stresses about especially with Braden Yeager this year on our team yeah all the scouts watching him you know there's going to be people watching in the building yeah but I think just kind of especially being a rookie this year I think it's important just to kind of showcase your skill every night is every night you can I think that's huge for me I think yeah I think that's probably the biggest thing just knowing there's people going to be watching now and it's not just the WHL draft anymore it's it's a lot bigger than that so yeah, that's for sure. Yeager's a good kid too. We had him on the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeager's is a beauty. Uh, what do you What do you guys think makes a good captain? Um, for me, I feel like somebody that could lead by example and vocally, so on and off the ice. Um, I feel like a good captain. Like I said, lead by example, so really drives the team in every aspect, and. Uh, doesn't bring anybody down, includes everybody, and um, really vocally um, brings everybody up together. Yeah, I would agree with that. Okay. Um, so as you can see, I'm a Canucks fan, as I mentioned. What would you guys bring to the Canucks? Oh, <laughs> oh my dad's a Canucks fan too, so I don't know. Um <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on. Well, it doesn't have to be Canucks. What do you guys bring to a team? If a scout or GM was to ask, um, I feel like uh, I would bring size, skill. I feel like I'm a pretty big player, especially to be a forward, and uh, I have lots of skill for it. Uh, I feel like I have a skill set of uh, normally what a smaller player would have. And just the fact that I'm 6'4 and I could do everything a small player can is you don't see that very often. And I feel like I'm real fast, so I could use my speed and uh, if I want to, my physicality pretty well. Yeah, I'd have to say size and playmaking to my get like to one of their teams, especially I feel like that I've got a pretty strong IQ and can kind of read plays when stuff's kind of breaking down or just starting. So I think that's pretty big. Uh I think my shot, the ability to kind of get it through traffic, get it to the net, just kind of create opportunities from there. Okay. How do you guys manage school, friends, and hockey? <laughs> <laughs> ask, ask, why? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so you managing don't. school, it's obviously hard. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you got you you really do have a jam packed day, and it's hard really to focus on school. Um, I'm coming from almost probably every junior hockey player, and it is really hard. So you really like in class, you really do have to buckle down and get your work done. And then friends, <laughs> uh, friends is obviously distracted by distraction, but it's good to have um, some fun time with your buddies outside the rink, and yeah, just have a good time. It's you only experience this once in your lifetime and junior hockey is from what I've heard the best time of your life. So you really do have to embrace the moment. 
and your yeah. teammates are your teammates are your friends. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I was gonna see how. I would, but the actual question I had was, uh, what does your guys' daily routine look like? Yeah, so for us, like me and Lyndon, we got school at eight forty-five. So wake up, go to that. We go for first period, and then we go to the rink from kind of 10 to about one-ish, sort of. We'll work out, skate, and then kind of cool down, hang out with the fellas for a little bit, and then usually go for lunch or something. And then we go back to school from 125, so that's period four for us. And then we got that class and another one after that, and then kind of go home, do a little bit of homework, especially because you're missing a lot of the day. So go home, do that, and then kind of chill out for a little bit after school, just kind of reset your brain, reset your body. Then if some of the guys want to go out, go hang out with them. What do you think makes a good coach? Um, <laughs> um, sorry for laughing. Um, feel like giving <clears throat> feedback to players constantly, showing them what they did good and bad. Um, obviously, the good stuff to um, build their confidence because you don't you always want confident players, and uh, the bad stuff to uh, tell them what they did wrong and what they could work on, obviously. And uh, just a coach that drives everybody every day. Um, if uh, yeah, things aren't going well, um, like I said, building the guys' confidence is always good, and uh, just driving every player every day to get better. Yeah, I think kind of focusing on that feedback aspect I think is huge, especially because a lot of coaches end up getting caught up in the what you did bad moments. I think there's a lot of times, like, I think it's huge when a coach kind of mentions what you did really well. So I think that allows you to kind of, like, look at it like they're seeing both sides of your game. Like, some like because mistakes are going to happen in a game. Like, they always do. It's, it's just how the game of hockey works. Like, shit's going to go wrong. So I think for coaches to kind of talk to you about kind of both good and bad is huge. Okay. You could get in a time machine right now. What era would you go to? <laughs> here, come uh, the here, here come the fun ones. Yeah. Uh, dude, I don't even... I don't know. Probably go back to the 80s or something. My dad okay. said his childhood was way better than mine, so I'd <laughs> like to see if that's true or not. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> say something stupid. <laughs> I'd probably say, like... <laughs> Just say it. Like, uh... Like 500 BC or something. <laughs> oh, okay. Back to the real old time. Oh, okay. yeah. Cave Go see what the dinosaurs are about. Oh, yeah. They have a favorite sports quote. Uh, fly like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I think that's oh, how it goes. Close enough. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Well, same difference. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, oh, God. <laughs> It doesn't matter the size of the dog in the fight. It matters. It's the size of the fight in the dog. That's a good one. Yeah. What are some of your hobbies outside of hockey? Um, I'm from Kelowna, so I love Water. golfing. And lots of boating. Yeah, boating. I uh, love going to the beach. And yeah, just living that Okanagan lifestyle, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Uh, same thing. Golf and then especially being from Calgary, lots of snow in the winters yeah. in Alberta. So nothing wrong with going to spend the weekend up at a cabin and kind of Lake Louise or something, go snowboarding for a couple of days. I think that was, that's kind of awesome. Yeah. I'm not a fan of snow. That's why I live in Vancouver, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I can't do cold. I don't have the hair for it. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they have a favorite sports movie. Sports movie? Yep. I think you gotta go the classic Miracle on Ice. Okay. Uh, I'll say uh, semi-pro. 
<laughs> okay, sweet one. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> I didn't have this as one of my questions, but I just thought of it now. When you guys are on a bus trip, say you guys are making the bus trip to Seattle, it's seventeen hour drive or something in a bus. Do they stop at a hotel or do you just do seventeen hours straight? Yeah, especially if we go to Seattle, like seventeen hours, we'll probably stay the night. We'll probably stay oh, at two hotels. Oh, okay. Like somewhere probably in Alberta or BC and then yeah, probably Alberta and then another one BC and then we'll finish off in Seattle. No. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering, I didn't expect you guys to do seventeen hours on a bus. Yeah. That'd be uh, pretty brutal. <laughs> if you could change one rule or thing about the NHL, what would it be? Mm. Brand new question. Never asked it before. Oh, I've wow. never heard that before. Man, that's wow. I was going on about it today. I think I would want to. I would want to take out goalies playing the puck. Yeah, I'd I'd almost agree with that. I think if you're going out to play the puck, like kind of outside your trapezoid area. Yeah. I think you should be able, if you're out there. I think you're you should be able to get hit. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're free game. Once you're out there, you should be able to get buried. For sure, I agree with that. That's pretty. That's good. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. I'd be doing that at beer league, even if you're not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> Running the goalies and stuff. Uh, yeah. Okay, draft question for you. Cole Perfetti told me this one. Uh, if there's a twenty dollar bill on the counter. And a hundred dollar bill in the toilet. We don't know what's in the toilet. Which one are you going for? I I think you got to go hundred dollar hundred dollar bill. That's the correct answer because the, the, everybody wants to see that you can get your hands dirty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, if you were an animal, what would you be? I think I got to go with a whale. <laughs> okay, it's just, it's just it's a mighty, massive beast in the ocean okay. i got a gold gorilla okay. just a big big ape okay and i always go with a dolphin because i look like a dolphin because i got no hair <laughs> and, <laughs> no hair and a big nose <laughs> uh do you have a dream venue you wish to play in one day Anywhere. Uh for me probably going to a lot of Canucks games when I was younger, I feel like Rogers Arena. Like I played there minor hockey, but I feel like playing against or with the Canucks would be definitely a dream come true. Sweet. Love to have you. <laughs> uh I don't know, I think somewhere like uh Madison Square Garden, I think that would be a really cool experience. Yeah, yeah something like that. I think that would be awesome. What's your favorite road barn? Road barn. Uh, I think right now, not playing in a ton of arenas, I think I got to go with the Brandt Center when it's pretty full, like the Regina Pats rink. I think in that place is full, especially at our season opener. It's all. It's not intimidating. It's just that kind of excitement fe feeling is awesome. I feel like it's full all the time this year and the last yeah. couple of years. Yeah, no. For the past couple of years, it's been pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, uh, I'd probably have to say the same. Uh, definitely, the season opener. I think it was almost sold out, and it was definitely a special feeling. From what I hear, wait till you get your uh, Seattle, your Portland, Spokane yeah. trip. Yeah, oh, I know. I heard those arenas are pretty sweet. Yeah, I haven't done it yet, but we want to make the trip with the Giants one day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have any hidden talents? I don't. <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, I don't. No, nothing okay. like that. Nothing special. Yeah, I, I, mine is like I can do West Side like that, but with my yeah, toes. Can, but, but, but with yeah, my, I can do that. West yeah, but I, but I can do West Side with my toes with no hands. <laughs> That's crazy. How do you do that? <laughs> I I I don't know. I've been practicing like twenty years, so That's crazy. Uh yet do you collect anything like memorabilia? Um, not anymore, but I used to uh, just collect hockey cards. Yeah, yeah, same with me there. When somebody asks you for an autograph out in public, 
does it bother you? Uh, no, especially being at a young age. Um, I feel like it's definitely something cool and you're just getting started. So uh, being a 16-year-old, um, if a little kid asks for an autograph, um, definitely doesn't make me upset or anything. I feel like it's sweet. Yeah, you know, I have to agree with that. It's kind of that, it's almost that kind of, it's a kind of cool feeling that almost like, like it's pretty cool being recognized like outside of the rink. I think that's pretty awesome. That's true. And plus you got many more years of not wanting to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have a go-to celly or chirp? Um, you know, I'm not a big chirper, but for Sally, uh, I'll probably just have to say the one knee, maybe a bow and arrow. I feel like I think I used that once this year. It was pretty sweet. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sally, I think I'm not a massive Sally guy, <laughs> but if it was a big goal, I think probably a one knee kind of thing. Something like that. And then chirping wise, probably <laughs> something that shouldn't be said, but sometimes it comes out. But yeah, no, not it's only in the heat of the moment where like, yeah. I'll throw a few chirps around. Oh, that's okay. The uh, do you have a favorite Gatorade color, and what color is your stick tape? Uh yellow Gato. Nice, the underrated. And, yeah, very underrated, and. Um, just white, white stick tape, red grip tape on the top. Okay. Uh, Gato, I think got to go with the classic blue. I don't think you can go wrong there. And then uh, stick tape, I think I mix it up quite a bit. I'll switch just different tape styles, different colors. I think all depends on how I'm playing. Okay. Uh, but all pregame rituals. Nothing really. Um, I get dressed 15 minutes before or off if that's something, but that's just some sort of superstition, I guess. But that's really it. Uh, I think one, I think one, I like when, uh, once I tape my stick, <laughs> I don't touch it after and I don't, I don't like when other guys touch it. I like to kind of just keep that by myself. <laughs> hey, that's, then, that's okay. And then I think I got to go play uh, some sewer, some sewer ball with the boys. I, I really enjoy that. Just kind of take your mind off the game and have fun. One story I haven't told in a while on our show here. The, uh, I, I, I beer league hockey, right? I tape it in white. I tape it in white and I took a black pen and a Sharpie and I colored in a puck, traced the puck three different times. <laughs> so I had three different pucks on my stick. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't really fly too well. They weren't very happy. And my go-to Selly is John Cena. You can't see yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, I like that. yeah. I have also been ran over in front of the net doing that in front of the goalie. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys could pick up one skill, not necessarily in hockey, but say you want to pick up the flute, what would you want to – is there something you'd want to learn? For me, definitely the guitar. Okay. Yeah, yeah. guitar or the – the one of those Chinese yo-yos, like the, <laughs> the two sticks with that string, and people like throw it up and everything. Yeah. I think that'd be something really cool to be able to do. Okay, last one for you. How important is a young player's public image and the stuff that they post on social media? Um, definitely a ton, in my opinion. I feel like it really goes to show what type of person you are. And uh, you definitely don't want to be looked at as a bad guy or doing the wrong stuff online. So definitely watch what you're posting online. And like I said, ki kids look up to you. And um, it's definitely real important if you want to be a role model in somebody's life to watch what you're posting. Yeah, and I would agree with that. I think especially for younger guys in the WHL, I think everything's going to be monitored by a microscope. Like everything you're going to be posting on social media is huge. I think, especially being kind of one of those, like especially being a draft pick, like a lot of kids look up to you like that. So, I think I think it's really important you watch what you post and kind of second guess yourself. And then I think a question everyone, like a lot of people here, like you should ask yourself is, uh, what would your grandmother say if she saw you post something like that? Yeah, that's just so it. Think, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think like 
that's something you should always consider and kind of just take into account like should i really be posting this that's just it we that's the exact same thing that uh we had this superstar running back that's going to be in the nfl pretty quick here and that's exactly what he said too he's like you don't post anything you don't want your grandma to see yeah exactly <laughs> And I just always like to bring that question in. So just to almost educate and so the young guys are aware of what's going on out there in the world. Ten years from now, if you post something wrong, they could come back to haunt you. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I want to thank you guys for taking the time. It was pretty awesome. And uh, yeah. yeah, I had a great time. And I want to thank you guys. And hopefully we look forward to running into you next week because, I mean, I'm going definitely to the Golden Bronze game. And then yeah. – I'm going to hit up the weekend on the Friday. Well, sweet. Yeah, so, perfect. Yeah, hope to see you there. Yeah, yeah we'll run in. I'll try to introduce myself if I can. Maybe get an auto off you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. 